I'm Matthew Nordhaus. You might remember me from such videos as the Rock Band Fig Campaign Introduction Video and How to Make an RBN Song Part 2. When RBN first appeared, many saw it as an opportunity to introduce rock band players to a wider variety of music. Now, there were definitely popular bands who released their music on RBM, like Third Eye Blind, Five Finger Death Punch, Seether, Creed, Steve Vai are all good examples. But there were also lesser known acts who released songs on RBN, acts that might not have made it as regular harmonics DLC, like Band of Horses, Flight of the Concords, Jonathan Colton, and so forth. RBN reduced the overhead required to get a song into Rock Band. As a result, we saw a lot of songs added very quickly, and it also greatly increased the number of people making songs for Rock Band. As a result of this, some people took chances on songs or on gameplay that would probably have been considered outside what was normal for Rock Band DLC. So take Amberian Dawn as an example. They're a Finnish metal band who embraced RBN completely and ended up releasing 36 songs, which was virtually their entire catalog at the time. We also saw new genres of music. One of the songs that was available on day one of RBN's release was Top Back, blazing a path into the previously unpopulated urban category in the rock band music store. Classical was also unrepresented until a few months later when Beethoven made his appearance in RBN. The second movement of Symphony No. 9 was recorded via MIDI instruments, charted and uploaded. As a direct result of the RBN community's experiments, new gameplay was added as well. Many songs had double bass pedal versions uploaded. These versions are only really playable with two kick pedals attached to the stock rock band drum kit. It represented an extra challenge for hardcore players, and these songs were only available via RBN. So then there was the weird stuff. Somebody uploaded and sold a version of Eensy Weensy Spider. We actually had a long and thorough discussion about who owned that song. And of course, the Parry Grip songs leave everybody scratching their head and laughing. One enterprising author actually matched the camera and lights in-game to a recorded performance video of the band playing the same song. I'm sorry about the poor quality of this video. It's the best that we could find. She said, Won't you come? I wanted to. And there were a couple of hilarious experiments that never really made it to the public and were only seen by RBN authors within the Rock Band Network Creators Club. So for example, what happens when you only put one note on each instrument for a whole song? What happens if you change the camera cut every single frame? No fun if every time it's gonna end the same way. RBN ended up being a community full of people willing to try crazy ideas and work hard to bring their love of music to the rock band community in general. We hope that the new version of RBN, via the Steam Workshop, with even more creative freedom, is going to lead to just as many crazy, challenging, fun, and interesting songs. If you liked this video, or you liked RBN, please share this with your friends, and thank you very much for watching.